What's up everybody? Welcome to the 2009 New York International Auto Show. In this episode of Garage 419, I'm going to show you some of the stuff I like for this year, some things I really hate for this year, a couple of surprises, and I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret, my next vehicle. You guys always want to know what that's going to be, and I'm going to tell you. Stick around. You are watching Garage 419. So we've got the new X6M edition here. We've got a new front fascia, side skirts, new rear bumper, obviously with the quad exhaust. And it looks nice in person. 555 horsepower V8. Obviously haven't driven one yet because this is the first one I've ever seen in person. Let's take a look at the engine. Oh look, plastic. Plastic everywhere. See the problem with the engines these days, and I know this is for sound insulation and keeping things nice and tidy down here, but you've got a V8 with two turbos sitting in between the cylinder banks, which is something I'd want to see. And you can't see it. 555 horsepower though goes a long way, and I would bet this thing is a riot to drive. One thing though, I'm sure that the BMW test engineers drove the hell out of this car, and they found out that this is the perfect size wheel for the best driving experience. I believe that, and I trust them, but at the same time, 20 inches on a car this big with fender flares like this, it's too small. I would want some 21s or 22s, especially for the M edition. Inside this thing, you've got the thick rimmed M steering wheel with your paddle shifters. And you've got the gauges that are basically ripped straight out of the M5 and the M6. And besides that, nothing to report. No special seats, no special buttons really, other than your M but performance buttons and, and that's it. I was never a big fan of the original Scion XB, but it was cool because it had a sort of unique flavor to it. It was lightweight, had lots of space inside, and very economical, and then that got bigger. So now we've got this Kia Soul, the brand new Kia Soul, which a lot of people have been talking about because it sort of follows the spirit of the original XB. It's small, light, gets good economy, and it's cheap, and it's got lots of space inside because of the simple, boxy design. So this one starts at 14 grand. As shown, it's like 19 grand. But you've got all kinds of cool features, MP3, iPod interface, Bluetooth connectivity, all sorts of accessories that you'd find with a Scion thing. It's great gas mileage. What does this guy get? 24 city, 30 highway with 140 horsepower, four cylinder, and CVT transmission, so seamless shifting all the way through. And it's not that I love the car because I've never been in love with Kias, but I like that you can get lots of space and good fuel economy on the cheap with this car. A typical, it's a typical she's picture. Pre she's pretending Look. what it would be like to drive in another the, state the woman, besides New York. She, right now, that woman is sitting there going, what would it be like if I actually owned this car? Well, I'd be on my cell phone, <laughs> not really paying attention to the road, my kid, my kid unbuckled in the passenger seat. She's, she's not even paying attention to us talking about her as we blatantly film her standing right here. <laughs> and that's how clueless she is. We know the Genesis sold well. I drove a Genesis. I thought it was great. It's a fantastic so, car. So we've got the new Honda Equus here, which is bigger, more lavish, more expensive, and supposedly will come in around $60,000 US. It's got a hood ornament. <laughs> it's got a sweet hood ornament on it. The question is, do you pay sixty grand for a Honda? You know, if you're not a brand whore, you do. Yeah. Because bang for the buck, you're getting a hundred thousand dollar car. Yeah, for 60 possibly. Grand. If you have, but you have to not care that it's a Hyundai. How do you get around that? I don't know. Hyundai still has to get around it being a Hyundai, which yeah. has been the butt of jokes in the automotive world. And they still have, they here. still have the accent. I my, mean, the my, accent is still here. My brother's first car was an '89 Hyundai Accent, and. The end Awful. result of that car was a radio station stunt where I drove a promotional Hummer H1 literally over the car. <laughs> That's my vision of what Hyundais are worth. Right. Until I drove the Genesis. Right. And the Genesis Coupe as but well. But it still which is has really the nice. brand on it. I know. So that becomes a problem. I have a feeling that if you get in it and drive it, it's going to have power, it's going to have features, it's going to have good fit and finish and comfy seats, and there will be someone out there who wants real value in a luxury car and they'll buy it. The, the guys that are on the shelf and saying, do I spend the extra money for yeah. the brand? They're not going to right now in this economy. I think this is going to be a big seller for them. This is one of those things where it's like once you're in the car, you don't really care what it says right. on the outside. Right. I kind of dig it though. I like the styling too. It's a blatant Lexus ripoff. The rear end is a blatant Lexus LS Who'd ripoff. Rip off the Rolls Royce with the hood ornament? Well, it's got, it does have a spirit of Ecstasy. What's that? Spirit of ecstasy? Yeah. That's the spirit of thriftiness. It could be. <laughs> so we've got the Jaguar XFR and the XKR. First two new models under Tata's ownership. Tata. Tata. Yeah. But here, Tada, yeah. 510 horse, 
510 horse. I've always been a huge fan of the of the Jag R coupes. I mean, they were, but the the last one, a little underpowered. Well, compared to what we're used to, yeah, everything's going to be. But, it can yeah. always have a little bit more power. Because here, it looks good. It looks like an Aston for half the price, yeah. except up until recently, it had half the horsepower also. So, well, not a little more than half, but that's not the issue. If the car isn't selling yeah. well, drop a monster supercharged V8 in it. It's not a formula that's really hidden secret. They've, the Americans have been doing that for their cars since oh, yeah. the 60s. Just the American car manufacturers have forgotten to do it. So they did it with their sedan. I've heard that this thing delimited. Is this true? Yeah. 200 miles an hour they, in this car delimited. Minor aerodynamic modifications, but they cleared 200 miles an hour in this car, which is for, not something for you can a family say. sedan. Not bad. All right, Vinny, do we like or do we not like the Nismo Z? You've got an aero kit, wing, rear valance, front bumper. You've got different wheels, lightweight wheels, and then some suspension bits, and a bunch of Nismo badging. Okay. Do we like it or not? I think the problem I have is that the guys that are buying this car are going to end up doing even more to this. And the only Probably. thing this is missing is vinyl decals. Kind of. I, I, I would rather have the suspension stuff, the wheels, and maybe the wing, but no, no aero kit. No, I think I think no the front kit. lip's ugly, and the rear is like, like for a car to have that aggressive a body kit, like it really has it, to it be. It should do something. You know that what I mean? Much. Yeah. And it doesn't. That wing is not nearly as effective as it is obnoxious. Right. For an extra, well, for an extra 20 horsepower that this car gives you, and a bit stiffer suspension, I'm not really sure that justifies a, a crazy body kit and a wing. I'd be curious to see if, if you took a regular 370 and let a decent tuner have at it yeah. with similar stuff, how it would compete, and that's something maybe we could look into later. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, the 370Z overall, great success. Fantastic. Yeah, Good, the, the, yeah. this car's fantastic. It's unfortunate that in recent years, having really fast trucks has sort of taken the place of having really badass off-roading trucks. Ford is solving that problem with a solution I really like. I give you F-150 SVT Raptor. This is basically your F-150 short bed with the extended cab. What makes the Raptor really special and different from any other F-150 is these Fox Racing internal bypass shocks. Fox Racing does most of their stuff for the Baja 1000 team. So this, these shocks, with this much travel, you can actually be jumping this truck over stuff and it'll land softly. Like, look at our picture of our friend Gene, the Ford SVT engineer, jumping the truck over there. Under the hood, you've got two choices of engines. Starting out, you get the 5.4 liter V8 that's in the normal F-150 with the six-speed automatic transmission. I drove that truck in our pickup truck race, and I liked it a lot. Also, at the end of this year, you can have the 6.2 liter Boss V8 making 400 horsepower. Now I have a secret to tell you guys. See that truck? I'm buying that truck. I'm selling my Mini, and I want one, and I have to have that truck. It is just too cool to not have and you guys will see me as soon as I drive that truck off the line in Michigan beating the ever-loving crap out of it. But they said that when I buy my own truck, they will show me where to go so I can jump my truck off of stuff uh, and, and hopefully not die in the process. <laughs>